So in this video, it's going to be about 10 minutes. I'm going to show you the basics of what you need to know about Python if you've never coded before. Um, normally you would install it onto your computer, but just for the sake of ease and speed, um, you can just go to this website, programmers.com forward slash Python programming forward slash online compiler. First thing you're going to want to know is commenting this line does nothing. Um, so if we put a hash at the start of our line, then it's not going to do anything. What we're going to um, also, if we do three speech marks and three speech marks, everything in between that space doesn't do anything either. So what we're going to be covering is we're going to cover printing. So that's outputs. We're going to cover inputs. Um, we're going to do variables and data types. Um, we're going to do if statements, we're going to do loops, one and four, and that is probably all we're going to have time for. Um, we're also going to do lists, but that's going to be inside of the loops. All right, so first thing is we're going to do print. So this is to make it give an output. So hello, and that's our program. All it does, none of this code does anything, but this one does, and it prints hello. So if we wanted to do a variable, a variable is basically like a container that holds a value. So we could call it x, a bit like algebra. So inside of x, we want that to be um, hello. And then what we're going to do, instead of telling this to print hello, we're going to tell it to print x, which is still hello. So it still prints the same thing. What we can also do is hello person. So if we change that, then the thing that it prints out is going to change. What we can also do is, so this is a string. A string is text. And that's why we've put it inside of speech marks. If we have a number, um, a whole number would be an integer, or we can have a decimal number, which is, I think, usually a float. Um, but what we can do is, if we have x and y, now we can have z is x plus y. And then if we print z, that's going to print 3, because x plus y is 3. If x was 10 then x plus y is going to be 12, or it should be, yeah, so z's 12. So that's basic basic variables. So we've got integers as numbers, and we've got strings as text. Next thing we're going to do is input. So we're going to do z equals, and so this is going to allow the user to input something. So this is going to be a prompt, which asks the user for what they're going to put in. So let's say, what is your name and then we'll run that and then we'll say my name is Steve even though it's not my name's Isaac all right mess that one up what is your name hmm let's have a look at what's up with that let's try that again what is your name Steve Okay, don't know what happened the first time. Oh, that's why I typed in Steve's an instruction on this side. Ignore that. Um, the next thing that we wanted to do was if statements. So what we can say is if name is Steve then we can say um, hi hi Steve we were expecting you or else if the name's not Steve we'll print so this is um, well if we do an F string Hi, 
um, whatever the name is, which is Z. All right, so let's try this. If name equals, oh yeah, so we can need to change this to name. So we've got an if statement. So this will only run if the name is Steve, then it will print this. Hi, Steve, we, we were expecting you. Um, if the name is not Steve, then it will print, hi, whatever the name is. I don't know you. Get out of here. All right. Don't know what's going on here. 13. Oh, okay. That's a problem. Here we go. So if the name is Steve, hi Steve, we're expecting you. And then if we run it again, uh, my name is Isaac, then hi Isaac, I don't know you, get out of here. Um, loops. So we've got for loops and while loops. So a while loop is while um, counter is smaller than 10 let's say and then we'll print whatever the counter is which actually doesn't exist yet print counter um, and then we'll increase the counter so plus equals this doing that is the same as doing counter equals counter plus plus one it's the same thing it just increases the value of the counter by one so what we're going to do is our counter is going to start off as zero. So that's our variable. And as long as it is smaller than 10, then it's going to print. So this is actually going to print until the counter is nine. And then by the time it is 10, it's just not going to do it anymore and the program will be finished. So let's run that. So it prints nine times. What we could do is if we want to include 10, we could do um, is smaller than or equal to 10, then it will run on the 10th one as well. Um, so we've got while loops, then we've also got a for loop. So what we can do is, if we have a list, which we said we're going to do in our for loops, we have to be careful with certain words. We can't just have list because that's a special word that's reserved for something. So we call it my list. We put list inside of square brackets. So we're going to have basically a list of variables essentially. So we're going to have, let's just name some stuff that's in here, computer pen hat scissors all right and so for the for loop we're going to do for item in my list item doesn't actually exist what that's going to do is it's going to create kind of a a temporary variable inside of this for loop so whichever item we're on in the list is going to be what's being used that time in the loop. So if we have item, I mean, print item. So all it's going to do is print whatever the item is. So this is actually the loop running each time. So it runs once and the first time it's computer, it runs again. This time it's pen, it runs again. This time it's hat, it runs again. That time it's scissors. Uh, while loops and then we've got functions so what we do is a function is a block of code and we can give it a name so then instead of having to write out this whole block of code especially if it's something we're going to use again and again we can just give that block of code a name and um, run it as a function so let's have a function which is um, uh, let's see print my I should have left my list existing, shouldn't I? Print my list. So my list equals my list equals again, we'll do, I don't actually remember what it was, computer. Yep, I did misspell it. Computer. P. 
pen hat scissors we've actually hit 10 minutes now but this is the last thing all right so what we can do is um we can put our for loop in here for item in my items so inside of the function what happens is when we run the function we will put a variable in here we're actually going to put our list into here and then inside of here it can use it so this is list items and then we'll do print item so right now if we run this nothing happens and that's because all this function is is it's, it's a set of instructions it's going to run when we tell it to run so what we're going to have to do is tell it to run so print my list and then we'll put my list into there and then that when the function runs that becomes this up here and then it should run it so then if we changed or added an item um, box then it will change when it runs and we can run a function as many times as we like so we can run it three times so those are really the basics we didn't really get into objects because that's something completely different um, I'll do that in another video for you but that is the basics of Python it's pretty simple obviously if we're going to do a proper lesson then we put together something more comprehensive so if you are interested in actually learning something um, have a look at the link below in the description and we'll have a look at um, how I can help you to learn Python thanks